What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Art Shack. So today I'm going to be showing you how to draw some rocks. And I know that rocks can come across as pretty boring. They're in everyday mundane life. But to us artists, they add a lot to the image. So I'm going to be showing you how to draw them. When you break rocks down into their simplest forms, they can often form the shapes of squares, circles, and triangles. Remember that rocks are three-dimensional closed shapes, so drawing something like a cube, a cylinder, a sphere, or even a cone will much better represent what a rock actually looks like. Of course, this is just a start. You need to add a lot more detail to it to make it look a lot more like a rock. Now, if you take the basic shapes, you can start to create a rock-like shape. In this case, it's like a half circle, but more of like a wiggly type. And then to create the three-dimensional aspect, cut across the line and then follow the dimension or shape of the line back down to the ground and connect the shape. After this is done, you can go back in and add some more details to give it much more of a rock-like feel. And you could also add in some blades of grass as well. Why not? In this example, I started off with a rectangular box, which I use as a reference just to get myself started. Once I've achieved the shape that I liked, I went back over it with an eraser just to leave the very, very light guidelines. Then I went back over it again, but this time I wanted to give it much more of a rock-like feel. So my lines are much looser, and I also really expanded and exaggerated the shape of the rectangular box. After the initial rock shape was drawn, I decided to expand upon this rock shape just to add a bit more variety to it. In this next example, I wanted to make a rock that had a lot more angles and curves to it. So I decided to make a rock with a very, very sharp point to it. Notice the three half circle shapes I made for the underside of the rock. Notice how the shapes of those lines follow the direction of the rock. You can use directional lines to indicate the shape and flow of an object. The last example that I drew was more of a flat rock that connected with more volumetric rocks just to show the contrast and shapes and details. Notice how the flat rock on the bottom has a lot more sharp curves and angles while the rocks on the back have a lot more volumetric and rounded corners to them. Rocks are more often than not seen in clusters. So in this example, I started off with a simple rock and then started adding more similar rocks around it and then start to vary the design and add some more rocks that were different shapes and sizes as well. I finished these rocks off just by adding a little bit of detail here and there just to add to the overall effect. In this last example, I'm gonna show you how to shade the rocks in. I started this one off with a half dome shape and then cut across and move that line down and then connected the whole rock shape. I then proceeded to add in a couple more angles just to give it a little bit more three-dimensional look. Once I was satisfied with the way the rock looked, I took a kneaded eraser and lightly erased everything out. This way I could reduce the outlines of the drawing. After all the lines were erased, I started to shade in the drawing. Uh, I started the top with a 4H pencil. I wanted to keep the top of the rock relatively light. And then more towards the middle section, I used more of a 2H pencil, something around there. But uh, keep in mind, if you only have one pencil shade, that's fine. Just keep it very, very light as you're shading. And then this bottom portion here, I used more of a B pencil, but I kept it on the light side. But notice the direction of which I'm shading. I'm following the lines or the direction of the rock. And uh, you'll notice me do that even more when I shade in the sides over here. Notice how I'm going pretty much vertical up and down uh, with the shading here. And while at the top of the rock, it was more horizontal side to side. So uh, following the line or the, the flow or direction of the object with your pencil can really help to show what direction or what kind of plane you're dealing with. And it helps to convey much easier uh, just the overall shape and dynamics of the rock. This last section I want to be the darkest portion, so I used a 4B pencil and shaded relatively dark, but I also varied the pressure on my pencil. I wanted to create a lot of visual texture on the rock. And once I had all the basic shading done, I went back into key areas and just lightened and darkened and then reinforced the general shape of the rock. 
When it comes down to it, rocks can be very, very boring and mundane. But to artists, they could be a very powerful tool to create some very beautiful accents and sometimes even centralized pieces of the art. I use rocks quite a bit myself in my own drawings and paintings. Uh, they add quite a bit for me and I really do enjoy to draw them, so I hope you do as well. Alright everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up, it really helps out. But also, if you did enjoy it, share it with your friends, I'm sure they'll enjoy it as well. Alright everyone, I'll see you all later, take care.